This is Edwards Air Force Base, California. Edwards is the flight test center of the United States Air Force Air Research and Development Command. Here, men in search of truth fly into the world of the future. At the flight test center is the fastest school in the world, the United States Air Force Flight Test School, from whose doors, upon graduation, come the men destined to push back the frontiers of aeronautical knowledge, the United States Air Force Flight Test Pilots. To find out how important this big little school is, let's see what it does for this pilot, who, by the way, is already a pretty good one. His name is Roy Jones, and he's come to join a new class that's just starting. He's 28 years old, married, and has two children. He has a degree in engineering and 2,300 hours flying time. Helen is typical of the wives of these students, and at this moment isn't too enthused about his becoming a test pilot. But Roy has no reservations. Here's a chance to put his knowledge of engineering to actual practice, to fly the latest aircraft and to gain added skill as a pilot. And of course, there are some aspects of the new assignment that Helen immediately likes. For instance, the small attractive homes on the base available to students and their families. They are unusually modern and up-to-date and provide every comfort for good living. She also likes the nearby school. Modern shopping center. And friendly neighbors. During the next few days, Roy is busy with the details of moving on to a new base. Physical check. Security pass. To call for his car. And other details involved in a change of station. Finally, on Monday morning, Roy, you report to school with other members of your class and are ushered into the seminar room where the commandant of the school welcomes you. After making you feel at home and telling you to consider yourselves members of the base, he makes one point very clear. All hairy tests are made by the airplane manufacturer's test pilot, not by you. The United States Air Force isn't looking for daredevil hot rock pilots, and any student who makes an unauthorized maneuver won't be around the school very long. He then briefs you as to your duties and responsibilities. And when he outlines some of the advanced techniques, problems, and tests the course will involve, you begin to realize the great importance of test flying. After your briefing, you and your classmates start your tour of the base facilities. You visit, among other places, the flight line, and are shown current projects being flown and tested by recent graduates of the school. For instance, this sleek new fighter, the F-104, and the F-101, a fighter that's heavier than a World War II bomber. And finally, some of the experimental models used by the high-speed research branch of the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. After your tour, you're issued your flight gear, test books, drafting equipment, and classroom supplies. You are also given the pilot operating handbooks, the Dash 1s, for each of the various types of airplanes you'll be flying for the next six months. That night, you show Helen the textbooks you will review during your training period. Algebra, trigonometry, calculus, physics, 
and some you probably know very little about, such as dynamics of flight, stability and control. The list impresses you, doesn't it, Helen? You've never seen Roy so enthusiastic, have you? And you are enthusiastic, Roy. You glance through the Dash 1s and can't wait to get into the airplanes you'll soon be flying. During the next few days, you check out in some of these airplanes, and then you find yourself attending your first class. You are told the course is divided into two parts. Performance first, then stability and control, each part taking three months. In performance, your first lesson is how to calibrate the altimeter and airspeed instruments. The purpose of this test is to determine the position error in the aircraft's pitot-static system so that corrections can be made to data obtained from this system. There are several ways to do this, and one of them is by determining your height from the ground by flying past the control tower. Surprises you, doesn't it, Roy? You never knew this before, but wait. Your instructor is going to prove this to you along with a lot of other interesting things. He tells you the flight test technique for this particular test. The airspeed for the jet airplanes will vary on each pass by the tower at 40 knot increments from 150 to 500 knots. You will record all data on your knee pad. The otolite readings will be recorded by an assistant in the tower. You will be given a test data card for the tower flyby and a schematic diagram of the traffic pattern. Early the next morning, your instructor takes you up to check you out on the test, and you learn a couple more things. First, your instructor will always fly with you the first time to demonstrate the various tests. And second, a camera placed in the nose section of the T-33 will photograph the instruments of the airplane while you make each test. A little while later, following the prescribed traffic pattern, you bank the airplane and start to descend. In the control tower, an observer prepares the theodolite for your test. And at the proper point, you bank once more at low altitude, lining up the airplane with the runway for your pass by the tower. And there you go, Roy. Past the theodolite set up in the control tower. You pull up and go around for another pass at a slower speed to complete the test. Later, you and your instructor evaluate the data recorded by your instruments during the test. And that afternoon, after school, you reduce your data further. The plots thus obtained are your calibrations and will be used to correct your airspeed readings for the remainder of the course. It's challenging work, isn't it, Roy? But you've got to be right, because someday the data you will be compiling will appear in the back of a pilot's handbook, the Dash 1. Your information will cover our latest and newest aircraft and will be vitally important to the pilots who fly them. You often wondered who compiled all that data, didn't you? Well, now you know. As you get deeper into the course, you're amazed at how little you know about airplanes. But this is your chance to fill in some of those gaps. And sometimes the day just isn't long enough. Roy's interest in his work is beginning to rub off on you, isn't it, Helen? You constantly find yourself discussing future plans with him. He tells you that assignments are available to graduates of the flight test school at Edwards, the Wright Air Development Center, and others. Since he can express a preference, which one do you think he ought to choose? Before you can answer, the front doorbell rings. It's your next door neighbor with some oranges. Right from the beginning, she's made you feel welcome, and in her, you've found another new friend. The gift is typical of the people around here. And suddenly, on a hunch, Roy, you ask Helen how she'd like to stay at Edwards after you graduate. Boy, did you hit the jackpot. That's exactly what she's been hoping for, but didn't want to influence you. She certainly has changed, hasn't she? Not so long ago, she wasn't too enthused about the new job. Early the next morning, you start flying a series of tests which you must learn before you can get performance data. 
For instance, this is the pacer test, which is another of the methods of checking errors in the airspeed indicator. And then there's the speed course test, which is still another method of learning the accuracy of the airspeed indicator. You are taught which method is best under varying circumstances. Next, you will be taught the sawtooth climb and acceleration test. This is to get the airspeed for the best rate of climb. You'll make an actual climb using these climb speeds. You'll be taught and fly the high altitude speed power test to determine the power required to fly the airplane at different speeds at high altitude. From this test, fuel consumption is checked so that range and endurance tables can be calculated. By the time three months have passed and you're through the performance part of the course, you and your classmates have come to look forward to these bull sessions held daily in the coffee bar. Here you discuss the flight test techniques you've been taught so far and try to predict how their application will affect the design of tomorrow's aircraft. You have a good reason for being interested, Roy, because you'll be the first to fly some of them for the Air Force as a graduate of the flight test school. The next morning, you and your classmates find yourselves beginning the final stages of the course, stability and control. In performance, you were taught tests to determine accurately how fast, how far, and how high aircraft can go. But in stability and control, you will be taught an entirely different series. The reason is simple. It would do little good to build an airplane with superior performance if the flying and handling characteristics were such that a pilot couldn't easily use them. Therefore, the whole series of stability and control tests is to check an airplane's control system, how it feels to the pilot, how easily it can be maneuvered. In this category is the longitudinal dynamics test. Several days later, your instructor takes you up and demonstrates it for you. The stick is repeatedly pulsed or pulled back hard to check the airplane's reaction to a sudden disturbance. During the days that follow, you are also taught the aileron roll test. In this, the airplane is put into a roll to determine its ability in this maneuver, an ability which is a must in all types of fighter aircraft. By knowing how to perform these various tests and others, it is obvious the flight test pilot is qualified to evaluate new airplanes and pass on his information to other pilots who will fly them. By this time, you yourself are amazed at your progress. You always considered yourself a good pilot, but the school has taught you to fly with greater accuracy than you ever thought possible. Because of flying highly instrumented airplanes, you have learned new techniques of evaluation which can be applied to airplanes with standard equipment. With this knowledge, you have added important refinements to your flying skill which will help you be a better pilot throughout your entire flying career. You're in good spirits, aren't you, Roy? You've almost finished the course, and graduation day isn't too far off. You're finally getting the big picture of test flying, and you can hardly wait to graduate and get your first job in this new career field. But as you start down the hall to the locker room, the Commandant's secretary stops you. She tells you that you have an appointment with the Commandant tomorrow morning at 0800. You're puzzled. Why is the old man being so formal? He usually meets you in the hall, calls you by your first name, and tells you anything he has in mind. Have you flunked any of the tests? Have your classroom grades been too low? That night you mention it to Helen. Sensing your concern, she starts giving you a pep talk. You're silly to sit there and worry about it. Of course you passed your test, and you know your grades have been good. Now snap out of it and get back to work. What a gal. When you first came here, she wasn't too enthused about your becoming a test pilot. Now she's pulling for you. You have changed, haven't you, Helen? You too have learned a few things from flight test school. You know now that the more experience a pilot has in the air, and the better he knows his airplane, the safer he will be. You also realize the great contribution that Roy, as a test pilot, can make to our future pilots. Helen's confidence makes you feel better, and you forget your concern. At 0800 the next morning, you knock on the Commandant's door. You're relieved when he greets you cordially. Then comes what you'd rather hear than anything else right now. 
He tells you that barring any unforeseen circumstances, you'll graduate with flying colors. Next, he asks if you've given any thought as to where you would like to be assigned and what sort of job you would prefer on leaving the school. You tell him your first choice is to remain at Edwards in flight test work. Of course, you name two alternatives. You've almost got it made, Roy. Among the last few tests you've got to learn is the spin test. And early next morning, your instructor takes you up to demonstrate. The purpose of this test is to teach the various spin recovery techniques. And show you under what conditions each one is best utilized. Graduation day. For you and your classmates, Roy, this is one of your proudest moments. You've upheld the fine traditions of the school, mastered a challenging course, and attained your goal. At last, you're a flight test pilot. And it's a proud moment for you, Helen. There's not only the satisfaction of seeing Roy make good, there's also the knowledge that now he's in a position to do his country a great service as well as to contribute much to the future pilots of the nation. A little later, Roy, in saying goodbye to the Commandant, you tell him you have a buddy who is anxious to apply for the school, but is in a critical job and has no immediate replacement. What should he do? The Commandant tells you to have your friend apply anyway. According to Air Force Regulation 53-19, all applications must be forwarded even though disapproved, and USAF will make the final decision as to nomination to the school. He reads from the regulations. The Major Air Command will forward all applications, regardless of action recommended, to the Commander, Air Force Flight Test Center, Edwards Air Force Base, California, Attention USAF Flight Test School, for screening. You thank him for his advice. He shakes hands and tells you, drop in anytime. Let me know how you're making up. And so, Roy, you leave the flight test school rich with new friendships and happy memories. You'll miss it, but you're looking forward to joining the test pilots who are flying aircraft such as the B-47 with jet assist takeoff, zero length launching of the F-84, a KC-135 refueling the B-52, the experimental X-13 vertical takeoff and landing plane, and many others still in the experimental stage. Whether you are assigned to fly fighters, bombers, tankers, or helicopters, you'll find the training you have received at flight test school will be invaluable throughout your career. You now belong to one of the best informed, most highly trained group of men in the aeronautical world, the United States Air Force flight test pilots. The men who, in search of truth, will be the first to fly the airplanes of tomorrow.